guys, I've got something to admit. I have never liked or even enjoyed Among Us. I hear you say, Redhead, why are you making a video about Among Us? It's a dead game. Yeah, I know it's old hat, but I had a dream about it, and it reminded me why I never liked the game in the first place. And arguably, it's not even a dead game. It's ranked third on the Switch's eShop right now in the UK. First of all, I do like to see myself as a more positive man, so I want to get started with the good stuff. The game is free on mobile, which is nice of course. It's cross-play and now available on literally every device. It grew in popularity thanks to the pandemic, making it a new way for people to spend time distance from one another. Even though releasing in 2018, it did take a global pandemic to make the game popular. Well done. I never really enjoyed the game from day one. I didn't need a distraction from being locked inside my house. I was already building an empire in GTA Online and I just bought a yacht. And now all my friends are hanging out on a spaceship. Man, I wanted to be in a virtual hot tub with you guys, chilling and not killing. Look at me, turning what was meant to be the positives about the game into negatives. I guess it was nice I got to play with a different group of people who I hadn't spoken all too much since the pandemic started. Now, the negatives. The game straight up sucks. It fails at being a game. I want to just play it, do the tasks, but every five seconds after I start a new task, an emergency meeting gets called or a body is found and nothing happens as everybody was just actually playing the game. And with each meeting, no progress is made on finding the imposters. Nothing gets decided and the vote gets skipped or on the flip side, everyone just fancies picking on one player in particular, often me, and whoever is ejected is more likely not actually an imposter because the map is so big, it's impossible to know what's going on and what people are up to. I almost never see the crewmates win as it's near impossible to get all the tasks done whilst keeping an eye on everyone. Look, I'm just on the way to my task and the alarm goes off, great. Now I've got to go and look interested in the emergency because if not, I'm gonna be labeled as sus. Great, so that's done and now nobody gained anything. Right, so I'll go and get started on my task. Now I'm killed. By the rules of the game, I'm not even allowed to talk to my friends. I just sit at my screen, try and do some tasks and wait for this whole thing to be over. The discussion always feels so disjointed to me. If you weren't around the location when the body was found or saw someone vent, there's no input you can really have. Yeah, you could lie and fabricate the truth, but to me, when you aren't seeing the big picture, it's impossible to make your own deductions, meaning you just end up believing whoever can shout the loudest. I reckon Jason killed himself. Among Us was a lightning in the bottle idea, a free cross-play game to get a group of people together whilst everyone was looking for new things to try from the comfort of their homes after months of being trapped in lockdowns. And yeah, to give it credit, it works great for streamers who probably, let's be honest, were all looking at each other's screens, having to fake the game to make it seem interesting and create a narrative. I'm dancing, I'm dance. Oh shit, Michael's fucking dead. The game's too complicated for non-gamers to play and too simple and frustrating for real gamers to enjoy, meaning it is perfect for kids. Its memeability is what's carried the game beyond what should have been its two week lifespan. And the word sus has shot up in popularity in everyday use. It's easy to draw characters can be seen everywhere and seen in everything. It's like bloody pareidolia, but for fucking bean people. Is that Pokemon? It's Among Us. Among Us. Among Us can be used for streamers to tell a good story. And fair enough, if that's what kids want to watch on YouTube, then bring on the onslaught of merchandise. I can't be mad at people for them wanting to buy figures of things they've watched or played, but selling a free game for $24.99 and wasting a Switch cartridge on just 735 megabytes? That's just bloody barbaric. Damn, I sound like such an old man. And people say to me, it's not the game, it's who you play it with. But I don't think that could be any more wrong because my friends and me have found a social deduction game that is so good, you'll be sweating in your seat, not knowing who to trust, and never being able to look at your friends the same way again. Secret Hitler. Originally a board game, although you can still buy the hard copy, it is hard to come by. The other options for playing are printing off a paper copy from the website or going and playing it on a web page. So everything I said was positive about Among Us still stands here for Secret Hitler. It's cross play and free. You just need a device with a web browser. The game visually doesn't have much going on, but it is still so much more engaging than Among Us. A round can last all of 10 minutes, though me and my friends have played around that has lasted for an hour. Depending on the amount of people who are playing, the example I have here is seven, there will be four liberals and three fascists, one of these being Hitler himself. Only the two non-Hitler fascists can see the role everyone plays. Even the titular Hitler can't see who his other fascists are, creating such a complex dynamic that the fascists want to make it obvious to Hitler who they are without giving the game away to the liberals. Thinking about it, maybe they should change the name I've had a few strange reactions when I suggest playing Secret Hitler. The goal of the game is for the liberals to pass five liberal policies and for the fascists to pass six fascist policies. Each turn a new president is selected and they choose a chancellor. The president then receives three policy cards 
and secretly discards one of them. The remaining two policies are handed over to the Chancellor, who will then choose one to enact. This process sets up the opportunity for the President to frame somebody as a fascist, or to determine if somebody is trustworthy. Ultimately, when the Liberals are a President, they will choose somebody who they can trust and will vote in Liberal policies, while the fascists will spend their time as President trying to deceive people. After the third fascist card is voted in, each following fascist policy enacted gives the President of that turn an opportunity to eliminate a player. If Hitler is chosen for elimination, game over, the Liberals win. This adds excitement as people start squirming for their lives and pinning the blame on anyone as everyone becomes part of the discussion. Unlike Among Us, Secret Hitler has no unnecessary mechanics that give the game away, such as seeing someone vent or trusting someone because you saw them scan themselves at medbay. Everything is on display for all players, making it a tough mind game that involves everybody. It purely relies on your ability to read people and pick up on social cues. Moreover, Secret Hitler gives you the opportunity to test your skills against your friends and family. Can you fool the people closest to you with just your words? There are no silly mini games. It's all about intense and engaging discussion. Personally for me, I know that I cannot help but laugh when I'm lying. I've got to turn this into my own personal meta, making it an advantage rather than a disadvantage. Kids, you've got to stop buying Among Us. Print off. Download Secret Hitler and become real liars. You ain't going to be able to vent away from all your problems in life. <laughs>